Oh, 
meeting my great friend Jaime Quesada. He's going to speak to us tonight, but before we uh, pass it off to him, I'm going to read a little bit from Proverbs 3. And I think this kind of sums up a little bit of the essence of Jaime for you. So it says, Proverbs 3, starting with the fifth verse, it says, Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Run to God. Run from evil. Your body will glow with health. Your very bones will vibrate with life. Honor God with everything you own. Give him the first and the best, and your barns will burst. Your wine vats will brim over. But don't, dear friend, resent God's discipline. Don't sulk under his loving correction, because it's the child he loves that God corrects. A father's delight is behind all of this. And so that gives you a little bit of a snapshot into, I feel, the essence of Jaime. Just an amazing man of God, a disciplined man of God. Um, and he has a great message for us tonight. Um, and you're in for a treat. So would you help me welcome Jaime Casada? This week leading up to the sermon, uh, I just got a lot of encouragement, a lot of positive vibes from people, and I just want to thank you guys for that. And it means a whole lot more than you guys will ever know. Um, it truly is an honor and just a privilege to be in your guys' presence tonight. Um, today, my message is going to be about walking by faith and not by sight, and what it means when God said that he calls us to stand out in this life. So for the first part of my message, I've got a couple friends who are gonna help out do this little demonstration, all right? And we're gonna kind of demonstrate what our walk with Christ looks like. Um, my man Luke here is going to play the role of God, which is no easy task. Samantha over here is going to represent us as believers and what our uh, walk with Christ looks like. And my friend Super Sid over here, she has the most important job of making sure that Sam does not fall off the stage and hurt herself, all right? So the whole point of this demonstration is we are trying to get Sam across this obstacle or maze of chairs, but the catch is she has to do this blindfolded, okay? Um, so this first attempt, Sam is going to try and get across the stage blindfolded, but she's going to do this without anybody's help. Um, so we're going to see how well she does, and uh, we'll take a look at it. We'll let her go. But like me, I think oftentimes we want him to control our lives, but there's certain areas in our life that we don't want him to control. One, because we've had success. Two, because it's going, things are going well. And to be honest, it's kind of nice to be in control. Um, and so this first phase right here, Sam is talking to God and she's saying, God, I know you're there, but I really like what's going on in my life. So if it's all right with you, I'm going to take my plans and I'm going to run with it. And I'm going to roll with it and see how far we can get in life, all right? Um, she actually did pretty good for that first try, not going to lie. But so many times in life when we try to do that, we fall flat on our butts. Um, and the beauty of this is sometimes God places friends like Sydney in our lives where we go through troubles. Because it's important to have a relationship with God. It's important, it's important to have that one-on-one -on -one time. But we also need fellow believers to build us back up. Scripture says that iron sharpens iron. And so that's kind of Sydney's role in this first phase. Is her job is just to kind of get her back, support her, and build her back up. There's hope when we fall down in life, guys. And so in this second phase now, God notices that Sam is struggling. He sees that she's not getting as far as she wants to get in life, and he knows that she's not growing into the person that he created her to be. So this time right now, God is going to call her by name, and he's going to try to get her attention. But what we're going to do is we're going to put some headphones on her head, 
and we're going to crank up the music a little bit, and we're going to see how this affects her ability to respond to God's voice. Sam. Sam, you called me and I am here. Please listen to my voice. If you would like to help you guide yourself through life. Sam. Sam, listen to me. Step forward. One second. Two hops this time. I love it. This is my favorite part of the demonstration, guys. So the headphones and the music, what does this represent? This represents distraction in our life. And sometimes this is the lifestyle that we're living. This can be the choices that we make. Um, for other believers, this may be addiction that they are battling, guys. Things that they have tried so hard to overcome and countless times they cannot get over it. Okay? Addiction, things that promise joy and satisfaction and pleasure, but as soon as that feeling is over, only produce pain and emptiness. And let me tell you guys, because I've been in this situation before, when you get to a point in your life where you cannot hear God's voice and you cannot feel his presence in your life, that is a scary feeling. But there is hope. And I will tell you this, God does not see you the way other people see you. He doesn't even see you the way you see yourself. And that's where the hope comes from. So now we're going to take the headphones off of Sam. We're going to turn off the music. And now Sam is at the point where she says, God, I need you in my life. I cannot walk this walk alone. And God, Jesus, wherever you lead me, I am going to follow. Wherever you direct me, I am going to go. Now let's see how she does. Sam, turn 90 degrees to your left. Walk forward. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Stop. Turn right. Walk forward. Keep walking forward. <laughs> Turn right. Now walk forward. <coughs> Keep walking forward. Now turn left. That's actually a dead end. Turn back right. Now walk forward. Now turn to your left. A little more. Now walk forward. Take one more step to your left. One more. And now finish walking to me. You have completed your journey. Give her a hand. Okay, so before we take off the bandana with the blindfold, um, I have some scripture here that I want to share with you guys. Scripture that I think really speaks to this whole walk with Jesus Christ. Okay? Isaiah 43, 2, the Lord says, when you pass the deep waters, I will be with you. He says, when you go through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, and the flames will not set you ablaze. The reason why I love this scripture, guys, is because notice in this part, God says, when you walk through the fire. He doesn't say, if you walk through the fire. He doesn't say, maybe you'll go through some storms, or perhaps you'll go through some troubled times in life. Okay, now God says you are going to walk through the fire and you are going to get hit in the mouth in life and you are going to get knocked down. But my promise to you is that I will be with you throughout the whole thing. Um, and so guys, let me tell you, I just encourage you guys, if you guys can learn to appreciate the occasional storms in life, if you guys can learn to rejoice uh, in moments that we need to persevere, I promise you guys, not only is God going to give you a brand new set of eyes, but he's going to help you look at life through a whole different perspective. Let's go ahead. I have the coolest friends, I really do, all you guys. Um, let me tell you, it is not easy to get up on stage, much less if you're being blindfolded. So that uh, took some guts right there, um, and I'm very thankful that I have some good friends coming off this. Um, the second part of my message that I want to talk about, a few years back, I would say this is my sophomore year in high school, I was watching the news, because that's what every normal high schooler does. Um, and I was watching the news, and they were talking about the University of Texas. And the University of Texas was doing this study on public schools, and they were going around asking students, they said, what is it that you want most out of your four years in high school? 68% of the males and 57% of the females said something along the lines of, I just want to fit in. I just want to be average and be like everybody else. And the reason I bring this up is because I truly believe that if you are living for Jesus Christ, if you know Jesus Christ, you know that being average, that being mediocre is not an option. 
And like Matthew 5, 26 says, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We know that the only option we have is to stand out and let our light shine. So let me go a step further and talk about why God calls us to stand out in life. Reason number one, life is short, okay? Life is very short. Um, famous Reverend Billy Graham, I hope most of you guys know who that is, said that throughout his years of preaching, throughout his years of traveling, the biggest surprise of his life is the brevity of life and how short it is, okay? Think about that. Scripture talks about when we get called into the kingdom of God, right? When we are face to face with our creator, not only is this going to be a time of joy and a time of happiness, but it's also going to be a time of sorrow, a time of sadness, because God is going to look us in the eyes and we're going to be before him. He's going to say, look at all the opportunities you had on earth to make an impact. Look at all the chances that you had to build somebody up to lead, and look at all these chances that you ignored. And I'm not trying to make this a depressing message or anything like that, but I'm trying to just kind of create a sense of urgency in your life as to why we need to stay in the now to stand out in life, okay? Um, moving on, reason number two, why do we need to stand out? People are watching, okay? Oh, that's my sister. People are watching, and uh, whether you guys like it or not, every day you step out of your dorm, every time you step out that front door, somebody is watching what you do, somebody is evaluating you, and whether you like it or not, that's just a part of life, guys. Um, that person that's watching your actions, that's watching what you do, could be your next boss, it could be your next professor, it could be your next boyfriend, girlfriend, or somebody else in your life that plays a significant role. So when people talk about, hey, put your best foot forward, first impressions matter, yes, that is true, guys, that is truth. And let me tell you something, that means a whole lot. How many of you guys, by show of hands, have siblings, younger siblings? So those of you guys who know me, you guys know that I have one little sister named Sophia. I swear she is my mini-me. Um, and those of you guys who know me know that Sophie and I are like this man. I miss her so much back home. Um, whether you're close with your siblings or whether you're not so close with them, um, let me tell you this. They are watching everything that you do. And believe it or not, no matter how many times you fight or how many times you don't get along, they want to be just like you. Okay, so what kind of example are you putting forth? What kind of example are you setting for those people in this younger generation that are looking up to you? Um, let me tell you, man, there is no greater feeling than being your little sister's superhero. Okay, that is the best feeling in the world. Um, so anyways, I want to get a little personal and share a little bit um, as to why I kind of just kind of had this idea and had this message. It was a, quite a while back, um, and I hope that this doesn't rub anybody the wrong way. Um, in my seventh grade year, uh, my father, uh, who is by far my best friend, a little bit about my dad is he is my rock. He has uh, just been there through everything, through all the successes, through all the failures, uh, through all the pain. He's always been supportive. He's been my toughest critic and my biggest supporter. Um, and I don't know where I'd be without my dad. Um, so this morning of seventh grade, I came down, it was early in the morning, and I was kind of in a grumpy mood, believe it or not. Um, I was not in a good mood. Uh, and I came down, and like most school days, my dad was up before everybody in the family. And like most school days, my dad had breakfast already waiting on the table for us. So I came down, and instead of saying good morning to my dad, just kind of, you know, brushed him off, sat down and started eating my meal. And he noticed, like, okay, you know, he, he's kind of grumpy today, but I'll let it slide. And he says, honey, what's the problem, man? And I said, dad, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm tired, man. He's like, tired of what? I said, I'm, yesterday night, I said, we got back late from our game. I said, I had all these AP honor homework that I had to do. I have two fat tests that I had to take this morning. And then we have practice right after school, man. I'm tired and I'm exhausted. And he says, okay. He says, but isn't this something you signed up for, right? You signed up for those classes. You wanted to play baseball. So this is what you chose to do. Um, so, you know, I think you need to be a little bit more grateful and change your attitude. Um, and I wasn't listening, man. I was, I was being a punk that day. Um, and I remember this day very specifically. Things they told me, I mean, you need to be a little bit more grateful, man. You're whining, you're sounding like a little kid, man, and, uh, and that's not you, so you need to snap out of it. Um, and I'll never forget what happened next. I'll never forget what my dad told me next, uh, because this is something that uh, to this day resonates with me. To this day, it feels like a verbal slap <laughs> in the face. I'm sitting there, and I said, you know what, whatever, man. And I said, whatever, I said, whatever, man. And you don't say whatever to your dad, um, especially if your father cooks for you, does all these things for you. Um, so before I say what my dad is going to say next, um, I just want to, you know, tell you guys that this is something that had a significant impact in my life. Um, I hope none of you guys take this the wrong way or find offense to this, but I want to say this because this is what happened. This is what my father said to me, um, and to this day, 
I'm very grateful because I believe he said it out of love. So after I said whatever, dude, to my dad, um, totally startled the crap out of me. Next thing I know, I just get this fist, right, just slams the table, and he says, hi, man. He says, stop waking up like you're a fucking accident. He says, stop waking up like you're an accident. And let me tell you something. I was so embarrassed because my dad doesn't yell. He was pissed that day. I was so embarrassed. I was so red. And let me tell you, brown people don't get red, okay? We don't get red. <laughs> I was so embarrassed at what I had said to my father. And he says, hi, he says, there are kids in the hospital right now that are your age, and they are fighting for their lives. He says, they would do anything to trade places with you. He says, you're complaining about homework. You're complaining about playing baseball. He says, shame on you. Grow up. After that, boy, I just put my dish in the sink. I said, have a good day, man. I'll see you later. I'm, gonna, I'm walking to school today. I'm not getting a ride today. I knew I wasn't getting a ride to school today. Um, but no, seriously, to this day, though, those words resonate with me. And I'm very grateful for my father because even miles away back home in California, he still has such an impact on my life, guys. Um, so, reason number three why we're called to stand out in this life. <clears throat> reason number three is that you were bought with a price, okay? Let's not forget the ultimate sacrifice that was paid for. I want you guys to picture our Messiah on that cross. And I want you guys to picture those nails being driven into his hand. I want you guys to picture Jesus Christ being laughed at, mocked at, humiliated, spat on, laughed at, and who knows what else. Just so we could be with our Father one day in heaven. Now you tell me what about that sacrifice is average. What about that sacrifice is mediocre. Um, my mentor back home, man, to this day, I still talk to him a lot. And he shared something with me that um, I really just enjoyed, just the message that he gave. He says, this is the only time in our lives where we get to live amongst the world of fear, amongst the world of doubt, of anger, of division. Because once we get to heaven, right, once we get called to the kingdom, all that suffering and all that pain isn't going to be there anymore. So this is the only time right now in our lives where we get to live with this sort of uncertainty, right? So why not make the best effort? Why not live to be the best version of ourselves? Because we know where we're going. And we know that once we get called to that kingdom, all this pain, all this struggle isn't going to be there anymore. Um, so that's kind of what I want to share with you guys today. Okay? Um, God did not create you to be average. He doesn't see you the way other people see you. He sees you the way he loves you and the way that he sees you guys. Um, and I'm just very blessed and very grateful to be in front of you guys today and share this message with you guys. Um, so I would encourage you guys, man, if you guys um, are living this life and you're saying, man, I want to reflect Christ, I want people to see Jesus Christ in me, you are going to look different, okay, and you're going to stand out. Um, and my prayer is that at some point in your life, you will encounter something where you're just like, enough is enough, man. I'm tired of going through the motions. I'm tired of living this life um, and just, you know, trying to get by. I want to stand out and I want to be the best version of myself. I want to be a better son. I want to be a better teammate, a better friend, a better boyfriend, a better girlfriend. I want to be a better sibling. All these things, guys, that I hope that you start to have this desire for and this calling for. Um, because people are going to see that, man. And when they see you living for Christ, they're going to want a piece of that. And they're going to say, man, there's something different about that guy. There's something different about Adam, right? There's something different about Sam because she's always happy. I want what she has. I want what they have, man. I don't want to be like this, I want what they have, man. And so um, that's my message for you guys today. I really just thank you guys so much. Um, before the band gets back up here, I do want to say um, I will be over here on the left-hand side. If any of you guys need prayer requests, if any of you guys are dealing with struggles, or if any of you guys just have this vision, man, that you guys want to just step it up at some point in your life, man, it would be my honor to pray over you guys, to pray with you guys. Um, and so I just pray that if the Lord puts that coin on your heart, please um, do not be afraid. Please have the courage to rise up, and I would love to pray for us you guys. Thank you guys very much. God bless you.
Jesus, and we come to you. Because we need you, Lord. We need your power in our lives. We need you to make us whole because we cannot do this by our own. So I pray, Lord, that as we sing this song, that it would be our declaration, our prayer to you, that we are weak, but we need you, Lord. And you come and you deliver us. Because that's who you are. You are you.
something that God, through you, is wanting to shape us and help us to recognize our need for commitment. So I encourage you, if you're going through any sort of pain, to use the lyrics of this song to correct you.
coming out tonight, and uh, I just want to just encourage you to remember that what Jaime said about standing out. Uh, I know we go to a Christian college in University Park, and um, it's kind of hard to stand out when we just want to fit in and we don't want to be noticed, but um, as followers of Christ, that is what we're called to do. So I encourage you to go into your classes and into your um, just teams and any other group that you're in and just be who you are and be the person that Christ has called you to be. Um, so with that being said, would you just bow your head? Uh, dear Lord and Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for creating us different um, than the person sitting next to us. Thank you for creating a world that is so beautiful in itself, um, and just because of you, we are made um, beautiful and new each and every day, God. Uh, thank you for the love and the grace and the mercy that you've shown through the sacrifice of giving your son to, to save us so that one day we can live with you um, in eternity. Uh, God, thank you for the opportunity that we get to be able to stand out and to um, just be followers of yours, um, to stand out and let people know what um, a life following you is like, God, um, even though there are trials and uh, sufferings that there are so many good things that come from you and come as um, a result of following you, God. Uh, thank you for Jaime and just his passion for you and his desire for others to know who you are and what that life is like, God. Um, thank you for the wisdom and the daily life that you give us each and every day. It's in your name, I pray. Amen. Um, yes.